So I see a Twitter message. By the way, I'm Jeremiah Nickel, a.k.a. JT Nickel on Reddit, at ProDJKC on, on Twitter. I see a Twitter message from a lady named Caitlin Long, and she says the Wyoming legislature is considering a law requiring telcos to increase IT security to stop SIM swapping and the related scams. The D.C. lobbyists of telcos are trying to quash it, but Wyoming is standing up to them. If you have been SIM swapped and are willing to testify on December 16th, please message me. Okay, <clears throat> well, Caitlin, my name again is Jeremiah Nickel. Uh, I was SIM swapped, I was hacked. I've spent legal fees on lawyers trying to go after a company that had used my persona on a social network uh, that had been compromised for the purposes of raising money on an ICO. So basically, I got hacked, ether stolen, I'm into Ethereum, that's what I do, and uh, I uh, also lost you know, the social media account, like I said, and then it was used to market an ICO. and. Uh, you know, when you get SIM swapped, you lose your phone and you, you can lose so much more than just uh, your crypto. These telcos need to understand, even now, I don't feel like my telco. You know, I was told I put on some security majors, but I don't know that they're very significant because I feel like I've been able to make some changes to my account rather easily still, and that sucks. And I, I don't know why they would drag their feet on that. Now, this, this also screams of the hypocrisy of the fact that we still have robocalls by marketing and politicians because politicians don't want to get rid of it. But that's kind of off the subject. My, my point is, is, you know, we want to celebrate some freedoms, but what are we willing to sacrifice in, in terms of security? Why is there no biometric way to... Uh, activate a phone for instance okay I can give some information uh, that's widely available on people through a little bit of social engineering and boom you know a phone is compromised and why these activations you know it just seems like there's so many loopholes and you're also trusting that all the individuals working for these telcos are honest and you know upstanding I don't believe it so we need to have better IT security. There's no doubt about it. It's shocking to me that the telcos wouldn't have taken it upon themselves in lieu of, you know, potential class action lawsuits or what have you. So the, the long and short of it is um, going through the hack, uh, it, it really like numbs your ability to do a lot of things uh, or want to do a lot of things. For instance, I froze. I, I don't. I used to trade cryptocurrency a little bit. Um, I don't even want to touch it now, and it just—it's just—it's uh, just crazy, like how all all these things uh, came to be. So I don't move money around on exchanges and try to trade or anything like that. I just, you know, it's just—it's just nerve wracking to think about. So my hacker was 19 years old. And uh, his name's Joel Ortiz. He's spending 10 years in California uh, State Penitentiary System, and I think he has federal charges pending. And uh, I, I feel bad for the fact that he is going to waste all of his 20s, you know, in his youth and his growing years uh, behind bars. So I, I actually made a video letter that was read or shown to him on sentencing day that uh, has actually been uh, aired on MTV's True Life Crime. Um, I can show you that episode. Uh, so, you know, enough with the victim blaming. I know that I'm a public-facing figure in Ethereum. I have been uh, since 2016. I, I just enjoy the ecosystem. I'm not a crypto YouTuber that splashes a video out every other day and tries to uh, monetize content. I just help run uh, ETH Finance, and, and formerly I was the moderator on ETH Trader. These were ETH Traders got over 200,000 subs, and 
ETH Finance has over 20,000, and I'm a public figure. So I'm a target. It's, uh, you know, I knew, I knew some of the risk going into that, but nobody deserves uh, this. You know, getting hacked, not doing due diligence at that time with security, uh, that time was on me to an extent, but it, you know, you don't want to do victim blaming. The second time with the SIM swap, that right there, my friends, is pure evil. And uh, there's just no two ways about it. And uh, these guys know how to do it quickly. That once your number is compromised, it's game on, and they can wreck you in 15 minutes. 15. Okay? Think about all the different ways you can reset passwords on different websites, social media accounts, whatever. I mean, the phone is, you know, for a long time was the only two-factor authentication you could have through SMS. Now those times have changed, and so have my, so is my security measures. Um, so what can you do? Uh, just my advice to you, if you're a victim, is make sure you, you don't roll over. Make sure you make a police report. Tell them to subpoena your telco at minimum, which is, you know, what happened with me. Fortunately, my detective brought up the idea of doing it. My telco responded several months later, and then after that, after that, the California uh, React Task Force team got a hold of me, which is actually a federal, state, and local uh, multi-jurisdiction, uh, multi-department uh, group that does cybercrime, and they, they're wonderful. I mean, really good. They're, they They need even more people working, I'm sure. I'm sure they're overwhelmed. So they got a hold of me and uh, we proceeded from there. And, uh, you know, it, it, it needs to change. And uh, anything we can do to get the conversation going, I'm your guy. Thank you so much, uh, Caitlin. And uh, good luck uh, to the legislature in Wyoming uh, trying to push some of this forward. And uh, Cheers and big hugs from Kansas City.